Glory to God. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Samuel 31. I'm going to read verse 1. Thank you. First Samuel 31, the very next chapter. Now the Philistines. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I'll show you. I brought a whole towel up here and didn't even see it until he brought me the bounties to quicker pick her up or something. <laughs> now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines fell down slain in Mount Gaboa. Somebody say Mount Gaboa. Mount Gaboa means in Hebrew a revolution, a rolling back, a turning around. In Saul we find out as you read in this chapter where Saul falls on the edge of his sword and the anointed is slain. The reason I read verse 1, thank you, I sure appreciate that. Bless her for that. Little. 1 Samuel 31 talks about this mountain. Many scholars agree, and even agree on this, chronologically, that means at the same time. David was on this side at Ziklag, on this side of the mountain. He was on this side of the boat. At Ziglet, all hell was breaking loose. He was burned out, literally. His wives and children were taken, as well as his men. And everybody's blaming him, wanting to kill him. He's encouraging himself in the Lord, and he's praying. God tells him to pursue, overtake, and recover all. He was so tired, he didn't even feel like fighting no more. On this side of the mountain, in his worst moment, Amen. chronologically at the same time, on the other side of the mountain, Saul, which is a typology of Satan. Because Satan used to be anointed. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven, Luke 10, 18. In other words, Jesus said to his disciples who were excited about kicking the devil out of people, he said, so what? I give you the power, I kick him out of heaven. Look like a star or a meteorite passing through the atmosphere of the earth is burned up. That's why Jesus said he was cast down like light in heaven. I've stripped him of his power, isn't it? Hello? I gave him an unlimited power, but I've stripped him. He's no longer an angel of God. He's fallen. And now we find in 1 Samuel 31, and I'm not going to read it, but it talks about Saul in verses 4 falling on the edge of his sword. Saul was eyeing David, 1 uh, Samuel 18 and 9. He was eyeing David, wanting to kill him daily because he was possessed with a demon. He was away from God. God had took his kingdom from him because in 1 Samuel 13, he wouldn't wait on God. In 1 Samuel 15, he wouldn't obey God because he was afraid of people. And God took the anointing from him. Stripped him of his kingdom. And now all he's got is demon possession. He's full of the devil. And he represents a typology of Satan himself. Because Satan used to be an anointed cherub, but now he's been stripped of his rank. He's fallen. Saul has fallen right here. But chronologically, it has been proven that at the same time, David was on one side of the mountain at Ziglag, going through the hardest time of his walk. At the same day, the same time, same hour, same season, on the other side of the mountain where he couldn't see, his worst enemy, Saul, was dead. Somebody say on the other side of the mountain. That's what the Holy Ghost told me to come preach to you tonight. The Holy Ghost told me to title this message, The Other Side of the mountain. I've come to tell somebody in your worst season on this side of the mountain you're staring at you think, my God, you're going to crumble, be crushed, and ain't going to never, amen, recuperate out of this time. God wants you to know what you can't see is right on the other side of this mountain. Glory to God, there's an enemy being defeated. There's an enemy that's trying to destroy you. You wanted to throw in the towel. That's why you wanted to throw your hands up and say, what's 
to use because God knows on this side of the mountain where you feel like you ain't going to never recover, it'll be the place you'll not only recover all, but God wants to give you a glimpse of the other side. There's a devil defeated. There's an enemy already been destroyed. Everything has been wrecking your nerves the worst. Hallelujah. Tormenting you and keeping you up. And you've not been able to sleep. God wants you to know this very thing has already been defeated. Look at somebody beside you and ask him this question. Say, did you know what it looked like on the other side of this night? Saul laying on the ground. Bleeding and dead. Somebody shot on the other side of the mountain. The enemies are laid out. Slain. Defeated. So you may be on this side of the mountain right here tonight, but whatever you do, don't you lay down and quit and die. You get up and you overtake, you pursue, you recover all, because God wants you to know there is life on the other side of this mountain, in this enemy, amen, that's been fighting you. You won't have to fight him, because while you're struggling over here, God says, I'm defeating your worst enemy over there. So come on over. tell you about a mountain. Let me tell you about a hill. Golgotha's hill. Golgotha, you know, by the way, it's almost similar to the word Goliath. Golgotha. Goliath. In Hebrew, and they, they bite the same word. Come on, somebody. My God. In the place of a skull. Calvary's hill. My God have mercy. I want you to know every giant's head has been crushed at a bloody hill called Calvary. Every devil you fighting right now, you must understand the devil's fighting a losing battle if you'll keep your faith. And if you keep your faith in God, your faith in God will keep you. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? The devil ain't losing, he's already lost. Jesus defeated him at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. So I want somebody to look on the other side of the hill with me. On the other side of Mount Calvary with me for a moment. There's an empty tomb. He's alive. Acts 13 and 30. Said in God hath raised him from the dead. And you were it. And you troubled. Said, Dad, God can't answer you when you pray. Dead God can't heal you when you sit. Dead God can't do anything for you because he's a dead one. Matter of fact, if he's still dead, he weren't God to begin with. Jesus is the only God I know who borrowed a tomb. He didn't need to buy it. You know anybody that borrows tombs besides Jesus? Well, I'd like to borrow your grave. I only need it for three days. <laughs> I ain't going to be dead in three days. Three days later, I'm going to raise myself back up. That's right. Come on. Why y'all so quiet? That's the one we serve. Yeah. Come on. See, a dead God can't hear you when you pray, but the righteous cry the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all the trouble. Psalms 34, verse 17. Come on, a dead God, hallelujah, can't answer you. But I'm telling you, Jesus is alive. Matter of fact, he forever lives and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He ain't getting in a session for us. He was 7 and 25. Anybody still believe he's the living God? Can I get you to look on the other side of the mountain? He conquered death. He conquered sin. He conquered every disease and every devil that would ever come against you and yours. Somebody shot his pen. There's an empty tomb. Yeah. Right here in the Jets of Georgia, there's an occupied room. There's an occupied room because over there there's an empty tomb. Come on, somebody. That, that means Jesus is here. That means for the God Satan's defeat is sure. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God who gives us the
the victory. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Nudge somebody and say, if you took a look on the other side of the mountain, come on, you took, if you took a look on the other side of the mountain, lately, come on, come on, brother, you took a look on the other side of the mountain, lately. Whoa! Somebody shout, looks like victory on the other side. Luke 8, 25, Jesus told his disciples, he said, come on, get in the boat with me. Why, Lord? Let us go over to the other side. Come on, Ed, come on. Somebody say, let us. Let us. Let us. I go, I'm going to go with you. Somebody shout, the other side is there. Yeah. Not because I can see it, but because he said it is. Yeah. The other side is a representation of victory. It may not look like it right now. It may not feel like it right now. That sick lag, it may not look like pressed down. It'll look like it's blessed. Hey Amen. You may be burnt out. It's such been stolen. And you feel like quitting. And you feel like what's the use. But the Holy Ghost said, can I let you have a glimpse of the other side? There's an enemy defeated. Keep walking with me. Don't stop believing me now. The other side. Yeah. Somebody shout on the other side of my mouth. On the other side of my mouth. Ooh, tell them, say, my weeping's turned into reaping. My weeping's turned into reaping. Yes. They that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Psalms 126 and 5. 